Howdy, folks. Welcome to the Apple Football Club newsroom here with some breaking news about the reasons people don't like board games. Now, this is not our research. This is an informal study conducted by Nick Bentley, who's the president of Underdog Games, which has brought us great Euro-style family games like Trekking the National Parks. I can attest that this thing plays really smoothly, has a great quick start guide, was really intriguing and entertaining and compelling for us and a group of friends that we played the game with. So clearly Nick Bentley in his capacity as president of this game company has every reason in the world to want to know why people don't play board games. I first learned about his research from a gentleman named Chris Bakke who runs a game design site. I believe he's in the UK and we'll post all the relevant links here in the description. So credit where it's due. That's how I found out about this study and the string of tweets in which Mr. Bentley relates the informal findings from 440 folks who responded to his query. Now, in conducting some further research on our own, I came across a great site called the Meeple's Herald that succinctly detailed the seven key reasons. And I don't think you're going to be surprised by the reasons uh, that Mr. Bentley and his 440 respondents say they don't like board games. And you might ask why we as a sports gaming channel reach across the aisle into this strange world of Euro games. Well, certainly we're not the only one. I mean, uh, uh, Lower Slower Board Gamer did a little uh, a piece on Heat, which is a great uh, game by the same company that brought us Ticket to Ride, which is a game that uh, Bob Tassinari, who owns the Apple Journal, showed me back in 2013 when he came over to the house after our Canton tournament earlier that year. So the Euro game community has a lot of the same concerns that we do. And I think you know, one of the key themes certainly that we've tried to address on this channel is bridging that gap between the Euro games and the tabletop sports sims and the reasons that uh, folks who may be sports fans but play Euro games don't want to play our games. And you'll, I think you'll be pleasantly or rather you won't be surprised You'll be pleasantly surprised that we have the same concerns. You won't be surprised that they are very similar. Let's uh, get into this a little bit. And I just want to show you some of the uh, sites that we've looked at. So first, here's Mr. Chris Bakke talking board game design. And I think it's just really important that we reach across the aisle. And we've talked to folks like Philip Schwartzman on this channel, how to get more people into sports sim games if there's such a huge community and there is certainly on instagram you see all these folks you know why aren't these folks playing sports sims certainly have sports fans among them this might give some insights into why and here is the post by chris why people don't like board games and he points us to the thread of mr nick bentley okay and Mr. Nick Bentley writes, there's a form on my site asking folks who don't like board games why they don't like them. I've gotten 440 responses. I've analyzed them and identified the seven most common threats. So now let's go to the Meeple's Herald and read those seven reasons. And you're going to love this. Number one, length of play. The most common reason given by participants is that board games take too much time to play. Now, We've talked about this. Ray Dunlop talked about how he likes to settle into a good game on our uh, preview of what the 2022 Apple football set might look like. Look, I'm a veteran of war games started when I was 13 or 14, like so many of us have. I'm used to a game taking weeks to play. So again, you know, we're always a special breed, we board gamers. And I wouldn't necessarily put too much stock in why people don't like your games or any games. And games take a lot of time to play. Some don't, some do. That's why Brian Hafferkamp, for instance, gives you short, medium, and long playing games, right? So there are plenty of options out there. I'm just looking over at my you know, pocket pennant run or bottom of the ninth. I mean, there's so many ways to slice and dice sports games. And I think the people who can really dial into stats-based games and keep them simple, like Brian Hafferkamp is doing, like fast drive football does. And I guess a lot of the play products really kind of do that. But there are some games that are going to take long to play. Uh, and this, as uh, Meeple's Herald says, I've had Catan games lasting for well over an hour and a half. You know, the other uh, factor is, you know, folks playing games on their screens, you know, their iPhones or iPads, whatever, their tablets, you know, can come in to a game and drop it kind of at will, which you can do uh, with a board game as well. Again, I'd 
I've played games of Rick Toffin's War where I've got 40 airplanes in the air where you're only supposed to have two or five or six. And I'll just put the game down, remember my spot and come back to it. And another thing is people and families really do like to play family games and parlor games. And if you're playing for two or three hours, you know, whatever game gets you through that time without really knowing that the time is passing. Well, that's that's what a classic game like Monopoly does. So it's curious. I think when you're looking back at you know who might have answered Nick's questions here, I'd be curious more about these people's backgrounds. Because not everyone is a board gamer, let's face it. Number two here, complexity. People think board games are too complicated. Well, I think that goes with the number one, you know, length of play. Again, if you don't like really big puzzles, you know, solving big puzzles and learning rules, solving the puzzle of what a game is, is what I'm saying, then board games just may not be for you generally. And that's fine. You know, there's no point in trying to target folks who aren't going to play games at all. But you know, to the general public, length of play and the complexity of these games, well, that's an issue. Number three, lack of interest. <laughs> Some people find board games boring. Well, again, you know, that's, just don't worry about those folks. Maybe you can entice them with either a game really topically aligned with their interests or a game that's so simple and compelling. How compelling can a simple game be? Well, that you know, brings you back maybe to tic-tac-toe. I don't know. Number four, competitiveness. This is curious. People claim board games are too competitive in nature and bring out the worst in people. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Certainly, uh, we some of us can uh, relate to getting into some maybe heated face-to-face -face contests. Uh, certainly, solo play eliminates that issue. And it's curious that a lot of the Euro games are including more solo play options, the Automa or other single player options. And certainly, the DVG Leader Series is all about solitaire play so competitiveness is a good thing maybe that says more about society uh being i don't know maybe folks are just not uh, being uh rewarded for competing too heavily or i don't know that's a whole other social thing nick bentley has invented a term for the people who think this is too competitive or worry about the competitors of board games he calls them over invest or he calls it over investment syndrome over investors usually People who care way too much about wins and losses. Now, most of the folks you hear on this channel say, I don't care if I win or lose. And that's the kind of people you really want at a convention. Now, competition is great, but most of us play just to play the game. That's, I think, why a lot of us go to these tournaments. Sure, it's it's great to get the plaque or the, the trophy or whatever, but uh, it's just cool to play the game. Number five, lack of socialization. According to some people, board games cause a feeling of dissociation. <laughs> and I agree with Meeple's Herald here. Again, a baffling reason for hating board games, considering there are tons of cooperative board games that inspire socialization. I don't get that one at all. So Again, you have to kind of take this uh, informal survey, as we've already said several times, you know, with a grain of salt. But it's curious that what people, I guess they're saying, if you get together, why would you play a board game? But I mean, there are lots of board, lots and lots of board games that cater to all manner of folks, code names, uh, medium, lots of games that inspire people to really engage. Now, and of course, Exploding Kittens and Cards Against Humanity. I mean, these are all meant to be fun games. So maybe, you know, there are folks who are introverted to the point of not wanting to play games and maybe not socializing much at all, or maybe they just don't uh, like the introspection and the kind of, even if you're playing face-to-face, -face, there's a level of introspection. You have to kind of, you know, searching yourself for answers and strategy and all that. So again, it's just personality types. Uh, you know, we're not going to conquer the world. We worry about the future of gaming, but you're not going to conquer every personality with a board game. Uh, number six, cost. Well, here, there's a big old one, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> you can't, you can't argue with that, that, uh, you know, it takes money to put uh, these games together and it takes, uh, you know, they're not all inexpensive. So, but they're collectible. They're beautiful. Again, it comes down to the personality type. If something that beautiful is deemed too costly, then these folks are probably never going to invest. Maybe they'll get into downloadable, print-to-play, PDF-type games. I mean, I don't have to tell you about, remember the uh, days in the uh, mid-aughts when the APA cards were still perforated, right? And we're starting to see uh, some of these perforated sets coming available on the secondary market here we've grabbed a couple uh apple's 58 season copyright 2009 that's about when you know the transitional period when apple was still trying to get into 
get back to the level of quality that they've gotten now. And these games are, you know, I think worth every penny. So it just depends on the person to whom you are speaking. And speaking of the people to whom you are speaking, number seven, association with negative stereotypes. Yep. Nerds and geeks. Now, if you know anything about the Seattle music scene, the great movie Hype came out in 1996, documented the scene. There's a band, one of the great formative bands called Screaming Trees, and the brothers, the Connor brothers, were asked about uh, why the scene is popular and what they're trying to do, and they were just trying to play shows for friends, and they said, we're nerds, damn it. You wear that badge proudly, and yes, we're, as I've said repeatedly, and others have said, we're a special breed. You know, you may find sports fans, and you may find stats fans, but the Venn diagram with board game desire you know, there is that connotation of the personality type. So be it. That said, let's look more closely at Nick Bentley's 440 responses here. And let's just uh, look into boredom. Okay, 38 responses about boredom. Boredom, they are boring, time-consuming, and a waste of time are board games. Extreme boredom, I don't care. And even if I want to, I kind of have to force myself, which I hate since the point of the game is to have fun. Board games are completely pointless. They evoke feelings of boredom and frustration because they're a gigantic waste of time, etc. It's just uh, interesting. Boredom and feeling stupid. Low attention span. Most of my friends are like hyper complex and long board games. Well, so that's a positive, right? So it sees, so forget this guy. It's like, hey, send your friends over to answer the survey and they'll say, I love long, complex, costly games. Uh, Failure and boredom. Rules are too complicated. Other players already know how to play and are impatient or unable to explain rule, answer questions. So that's a lesson for all of us. Be patient, okay? And don't dive in like, okay, here's what you do. And you do this and you do that. Let people talk, ask questions. Start with the simple goal of the game is and work from there. And that's why quick start guides are very important. Rulebook assumes previous knowledge on how other adult board games work. I enjoy Cluedo. Okay. And again, there's games for everybody. And, you know, there are gateway games. Uh, stress, boredom, combo. There are no real stakes and is therefore not worth the effort to win. <laughs> boredom. Like a waste of time because I have other things to do. The game usually involves too much chance. So it doesn't feel meaningful. Interesting. Too much chance. We want decision making and some maybe stat statistically based outcomes. Embarrassment, being put on the spot, looking stupid, mental overload, boredom with tedious, complicated, random rules, lack of intellectually simulating meta layer that hits me, see a fame as say, I'm not sure there, but okay. Here's the one, we'll take boredom off here. My strong feelings are particularly about learning a new game. Usually when someone proposes to play a game of a new one I've played, it's usually very, very complicated and they try to explain to me verbally rather than just let me figure out the rule book myself. Yes, they're usually not that good at explaining it. To avoid being rude, I nod along while they talk while still not understanding. That's my number one concern. I mean, learning the rules, let people at it, you know, and that's why it's tough when you invite folks over to say, hey, I've got a brand new game here. I remember one time we were trying to, my wife suggested we play Colditz with folks, and that is not quite the uh, simple board game. There's a lot of complexity there, even though it appears simple on the face of it. You know, you're trying to escape a uh, World War II uh, German prison camp there, and just explaining the rules and all the nuances, you can see people checking out. You just got to put that one back in the box and get back to something, again, like code names, and work through a few games like that and then you have give people, hey, let's try this game, give you a week to learn the rules. Here's someone who says, I dread playing board games. I want the game to end and look forward to it ending. They have they invoke boredom and frustration and annoyance. The only game I've ever liked was Sequence or Gimme Five, very similar games. Uh, you know, I won't go through the rest of all of these. Let's see. Here's another person, though, the anxiety aspect. They give me strong anxiety. It's horrible. I'll never play them. It's just never my friends and my thing, but my boyfriend and all his friends love playing it. Seems to me their main free time activity, so I tried a couple. It's plain horrible how much it stresses me. Rules are too hard. I stay feeling my brain is melting. I'm crying now. I made brass candles. Oh, my goodness. So anxiety is a really big deal with folks. And so I think the lesson is, you know, be patient when you're explaining games. Don't worry if people don't get it the first time. You didn't get it the first time. Oh, I'll speak for myself. I didn't get it the first time. So, you know, boy, just some real food for thought there, uh, whether you're a sports game company, any game company. 
And it really talks to some other issues, really personal confidence in coming to games. They, they can be stressful and, you know, learning, you know, when you're confronted with something like this right off the bat, boy, what does that mean? I mean, I can see people checking out again, folks like you and me, we are uh, really intensely focused. Like, oh man, we see that and we just like, give me more of that. I want a lot of that. And there are folks who say, oh, good, please get that away from me. So curious to hear your thoughts. Have you met friends who have these ideas, these thoughts about why they don't like board games and maybe some ways that you teach people in your life board games for me for teaching apple football for instance since that's the game that adopted me i guess uh you know and other people have said this if you're going to teach people the game start with a team that they know or they like or some team that has a compelling story i mean the most recent super bowl or tom brady someone they know and go from there and let them figure things out and let them do things wrong too and don't worry oh no 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 that's got to be two lines here because of that it's like well okay yeah, just go with it for now. And then you can teach them right, learn them right, but just always make it fun and not stressful. And and I, I have to stop myself from getting stressed from reading the rules and oh, I have to learn this game now. So it shouldn't be about that at all. You're going to hear your thoughts, any good game learning tips or teaching tips, feel free to shoot us a note down below.